Okay, Assalamualaikum. A very good morning, everyone. So let's begin uh, our class with uh, Mukitab Al Fatiha. Okay, so let's continue our class today, okay, <clears throat> with um, acids and bases. So I hope you can see my slide, yeah? Boleh nampak eh? Boleh. Boleh boleh ni. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, uh, before we uh, move to 3.2, okay, the new uh, subtopic, eh, 3.2 apa eh? Okay, the strengths of assets and bases eh. <coughs> so, kita recap dulu, okay, uh, 3.1, okay. You have learned the theories of assets and bases. We have three theories, okay. We have Arrhenius, Bronson Lowry and also Lewis. Uh, Lewis theories. Okay, so based on Arrhenius, this is um, uh, I mean the pioneer lah, okay, pioneer yang explain uh, on the theories of acids and bases but this one is <coughs> only limited to uh, acids that produce H plus and also base that produce OH minus, okay. So basically uh, anything involved water lah yang dia dissolve dalam water which is aqueous, okay. So because of that, um, Bronsted Lowry, okay, Bronsted and Lowry, they um, come come up with, uh, they came up with uh, uh, new theories actually to enhance the Arrhenius theory. Dia bukan theory yang baru, actually dia nak enhance what cannot be explained by Arrhenius, okay. So, they explain the acid-base reaction uh, based on proton transfer reaction. So, it means that uh, for acid, it is a uh, donating proton which is H plus while base will accept uh, proton or accept H plus, okay. And we have another one theory which is Lewis, okay. So, J. N. Lewis explain base, the acid base reaction based on electron transfer. Okay, it's different from Russell Lowry. Russell Lowry did refer pada H plus ataupun proton. And now for Lewis, electron transfer. Okay, so basically electron transfer dia akan terbalik dengan you belajar pada Russell Lowry. So for Russell Lowry, um, uh, donating proton adalah acid, right? Okay, but for Lewis, donating electron itu adalah uh, species daripada uh, base. Okay, and the acid, dia adalah, uh, ni lah, accepting the electrons. So, I hope um, you still ingat lah eh, what you have learned yesterday. Okay, so now, Bunyi-bunyi punya. Tak tahu lah korang dengar ke tak. <laughs> okay so <coughs> uh, for 3.2 it's quite a long subtopic jugalah sebenarnya eh. Okay sebelum kita pergi pada um, lebih details calculation kita akan explain dulu the strengths of acids and bases. Okay based on their molecular structure and then explain the dissociation between uh, H plus or H minus and also A minus A plus of acids and bases. And then write the, it said the ganggu pula bunyi ni. Write the acid base dissociation constant expression of Ka and Kb. Okay. And then um, uh, relate the strength of acid base value based on Ka and Kb. So kalau you perasan kat sini, kita ada perkataan uh, Ka and Kb. Constant expression Ka and Kb. Okay. Wait lah. Sebab bukan saya... Yang buat kan. So macam tiba macam saya nak delete ni ni. Okay. Okay. So tadi uh, number three tadi write the acid base dissociation constant expression. So kalau uh, actually um, what you have learned uh, uh, in chapter two okay 
you ingat lagi, you belajar expression KC and KP. C is for concentration, P is for pressure. Basically, uh, this uh, acid-base dissociation constant pun sebenarnya method dia sama dengan you belajar untuk KC and KP. Okay, so if you uh, go for chapter 3, KA it means for acid, KB means for base. Okay, kita akan pakai balik. Okay, so you tak boleh tinggalkan what you have learned in chapter 2 lah. Okay, and then... Um, <coughs> Relate the strength of acid, okay, based on value of Ka and Kb and that express the relationship between Ka, Kb and Kw. So, what is Kw pula? Okay, banyak sangat constant dah. So, W actually referring to water. Okay, and then express the relationship between PKA, PKB and PKW. Uh, apa benda pula ni? Dah macam-macam dah ni. Okay, so saya akan explain lah all of this. Okay, what is Ka, Kb, Kw and then what is PKA, PKB and PKW. Okay, and then explain the ionic product. Uh, water and relate the concentration of H3O plus and OH minus in pure water and then of course ah, <coughs> calculation lah for the concentration eh. So semua you akan belajar dalam this subtopic. Okay so first kita pergi pada molecular structure of acid. Uh, acid dululah eh. Acid strength. Sebab base dia tak banyak sangat. So acid ni yang banyak. Okay. So the strength of an acid depends on how easily the proton H plus okay is lost or removed from H X bond. Maksudnya kat sini lagi mudah dia tercerai okay dissociate daripada uh, bond tu untuk dapat H plus lagi kuatlah acidity dia. Okay macam contoh kita biasa tengok kan HCl Dia uh, nak determine acidity is not be based on HCl. It's actually based on H plus. Okay. Acidity kita refer pada H plus not HCl itself. So dia akan dissociate, uh, dia masuk dalam air kan. Dia akan dissociate to get H plus and Cl minus. Okay. So ni maksud ayat kat sini strength of acid. The easily lagi senang you nak produce H plus lagi kuat acidity dia because you akan dapat H plus tu cepat. Tahu tak? Okay, so uh, ni maksud ayat yang first eh. And then the strength of as of an acid also depends on the bond polarity. Okay, you have to refer back what you have learned in chemical bonding uh, chapter 3 last semester. Okay, bond polarity. Maksudnya lagi polar tu uh, actually the strength of acid pun lagi uh, kuat. Uh, nanti kita akan explain balik lah. I hope you can, uh, kita akan recap balik. So I hope you still ingat lah. Okay, so we have uh, here four types of acids. Okay, we have binary acids. Maksudnya dia dua sajalah. So, paling basic lah HX kan. HCl ke, HBr ke, HI, HF. Okay, contoh dia lah. Okay, we also have polyprotic acid. So, polyprotic means when you have more than one hydrogen. For example, H2SO4 ada dua hydrogen. H3PO4, phosphoric acid ada tiga hydrogen. Okay, and then we have oxo acid or sometimes we call it as oxy acid. So it's actually uh, acid yang ada oxygen. Okay. And then organic acid. Organic acid basically adalah uh, carboxylic acid. Okay. So C yang ada COOH. Okay. So kita pergi one by one lah. Eh. For binary acid, okay, as going down the group, the in the predictable, I hope you still remember, eh, okay, you punya predictable tu, okay, so going down the group, uh, the size of X, what is X kat sini? Normally is group 17, okay, normally lah, actually you can relate with group 16 too, okay, but uh, ni macam ni kan binary kan, uh, okay, eh, sorry, sorry, this is not binary, so group 17 lah normally, eh. So as going down the group, okay, group 17 though, you going down the group, okay, the size of X increases, make the HX bond get longer and weaker. Okay, for this statement, chapter 2, remember, this is not chapter 3, chapter 2 last semester. Um, bahagian predictable tu ya. Yeah. Okay, going down the group, size uh, increase. Why? Betul lah kan? Sebab uh, going down the group uh, you punya N bertambah. Betul tak? N increase so maksudnya kita punya shell pun bertambah kan? So that's why size tu makin besar, makin besar. Okay. Makes the HX bond get longer and weaker. Right? Bila size tu besar bond between hydrogen and X tu dia makin panjang lah. 
kan. So sebab dia apa-apa yang ikat dia adalah central atom kan. Eh sorry, dia punya center kan. So this is the nucleus. So lagi panjang, maknanya bond tu pun akan makin panjang and it become weaker. Why weaker? So dia punya attraction dengan nucleus tu tak kuat. So weak lah tu tak. So that's why the strength of acid increases. Ha, kenapa dah terbalik pula? Remember, the strength of acid is actually uh, uh, kita kira based on H plus. Okay, remember HCl kita pecah jadi H plus and Cl minus. Kita tak tengok yang ni, kita tengok yang ini H plus. Maksudnya lagi weak bond between H and Cl, lagi mudah dia nak putus. Bila lagi mudah putus, lagi mudah you nak dapat H plus, lagi kuatlah acid tu acid tu, strength tu eh. So that's why here uh, the weaker the bond okay the stronger the acid. Uh, okay, this is the statement for this lah. Okay, so if you look at this <coughs> um, uh, mana tadi eh Okay, Relat relatively strength of acid lah. So we know that HI, okay, is uh, dia paling bawah kan. Dia lebih kuat daripada HBr, lagi kuat pada HCl and HF lah paling tak kuat. Okay. So and then after that, uh, ni tadi kita cerita going down the group kan. Okay, as going across a period, element of periodic table as the electronegative Vt of X. Now across the period kita mention about electronegativity. Okay electronegativity increase right across the period. Maksud electronegativity apa? Saya pernah ada explain sebelum ni. Okay. Dia lagi suka pada negatif. Dia lagi suka pada elektron. Okay betul tak? Kan? So paling tinggi is actually F kan? Dalam period table tu F is the highest En. Okay, so the HX bond polarity increases. Okay, lagi tinggi negativity kalau you buat bond between H dengan X, dia lebih mudah nak ke arah X. So kalau you buat, kalau you belajar dulu kan, remember you belajar uh, chemical bonding, polarity kan, H kat sini, sini gemuk. Sebab apa gemuk? Elektron kat sini ada banyak. Dia lebih suka pada X. Lagi elektron negatif, lagi dia suka pada X. So this is partially negative, this is partially positive, right? Okay. So dia kata kat sini lagi tinggi uh, the electron negativity, the strength of acid increases. Why? Maksudnya bila dia dia tak seimbang kan, dia jadi more polar, okay. That's why dia lebih mudah untuk keluar menjadi H+. Maksudnya kat H ni dia akan jadi lebih positif. Okay, so that's why bila lebih positif, remember acid ni kita nak referring to H plus. Okay, sebab kalau dia sama rata, contoh, um, contoh saya cerita contoh yang non-polar kan, Cl dengan Cl. So positif negatif dia sama rata. So that's why dia, dia tak ada value of positivity tu. Okay, so in this case, kita lagi negatif X tu, maksud dia kat sini H plus tu lagi positif. That's why the strength of acid increase. Okay. <coughs> Itu tadi binary acid eh. So now we move to oxo acids. <coughs> acids. Acids yang ada oksigen eh. So direction of oxo acid water involve breaking of OH bond. Okay. HClO, HBRO. Basically oksigen dia bond dengan H. Kita nak tengok bond yang kat sini. Remember kita nak tengok H plus tu. Okay, so the strength of oxo acid is determined by, by how the group of atoms attached to oxygen affects the polarity. The acid strength increases as the electronegativity of Y increases. In this case, contoh Y dia adalah Cl ke Br ke lah. So in this case, maksudnya sama jugalah kita cerita pasal electronegativity. Lagi tinggi electronegativity, lagi kuatlah acid strength. Macam saya cakap tadi, contoh we know that Here in this case HClO is uh, stronger than HBRO. Okay, statement yang ni eh. So here dia kata Cl is more electronegative than Br. Bila more electronegative, tadi remember saya cakap dia suka lagi elektron. Dia lagi suka negatif tu. So that's why dia akan pull semua elektron yang ada dalam tu dia akan tertarik ke arah klorin. Dia akan tertarik ke arah klorin. So maksudnya kat sini negatif dia lebih kuat. So automatically hydrogen akan more positif. 
delta positive tu akan makin obvious. So that's why dia kata CL effectively withdraw the electron density from the OH bond. Dia tertarik ke sini, dia tertarik lagi. Okay. So resulting the bond more polar. Ha, kenapa bond polar? Sebab dia obviously negative ni obviously positive. So lebih sangat-sangat pol polar lah. Okay. So as well as weakens the bond. Ah, You jangan confuse eh. So benda ni dia jadi contradict lah. So dia akan jadi bila uh, more polar dia inversely proportional eh. Kita imagine macam tu. So more polar bond tu akan jadi weak. So bila bond tu weak so dia akan mudah untuk keluar hasilkan H plus. That's why the stronger the acid. Okay. How about let's say between the same uh, oxo acid. Contoh oxo acid you sama. H, C, L, O. Cuma O awak berubah. That's why N lah. Dia boleh jadi 1, 2, 3, 4. For example. Ha, macam ni kita nak tengok dia punya strength pula. Tadi kita compare dari segi different Y. Different of CL and BR lah Y eh. Now same Y but different uh, number of oxygen. So here when you have different number of oxygen, the acid strength increases as lone oxygen increases. Means that lagi banyak oxygen, lagi kuat acid tu. Okay. Still you can actually relate with the uh, electron negativity pasal kita cerita pasal electron density kan. Remember tadi saya mention dia akan uh, electron density semua akan tertarik ke arah uh, klorin. So you imagine lagi banyak oksigen. Okay. So dia lagi tertarik sebab oksigen ni sendiri dah ada dia punya uh, ada elektron. Betul tak? Ada lone pair. So dia lebih negatif kat situ. Okay, so imagine lah if HCl4, dia ada lagi banyak oksigen, ada sampai empat. Okay, so kat sini lepas tu dia kata HCl4 is the strongest acid because the three lone oxygen atoms attached to central atom pull the electron density from central atom. Sebab oksigen ada empat, dia tarik semua pergi ke central atom. So, means that dia akan kurang lah uh, negatif dekat OH bond tu. Okay. So ini kalau kita ikut ha, ni dia punya uh, polarity lah kalau uh, look at this color the electron reach the more towards uh, yellow and orange color kan uh, kalau electron poor dia biru. So kalau you tengok HClO3 lagi banyak oksigen of course lah lagi banyak uh, electron reach tu dari segi color dia lah. Okay. So tadi oxo acids. Okay how about polyprotic acid? Polyprotic ni tadi apa? Yang you have more than, you can have more than one hydrogen lah. Okay so the acid strength of a polyprotic acid and it's an ion which is the conjugate base decreases with increasing negative charge. Okay apa maksud dia kat sini? <coughs> For example phosphoric acid. Okay, remember kalau dia pecah in water dia akan dapat H2PO4 minus plus HCO plus. Okay, and then this this H2PO4 sebab dia still ada hydrogen dia boleh dissociate lagi tu tak? Sebab hydrogen tu dia boleh uh, hilangkan lagi. Contoh macam tadi uh, you belajar kan acid uh, and conjugate base kan? So contoh ni acid so ini akan jadi base ini uh, base conjugate ni conjugate base, ni conjugate acid kan. So kalau ini contohlah saya tak jadikan dia sebagai base, saya jadikan dia sebagai acid lagi. Sebab acid maksudnya dia akan donate proton kan. So bila dia donate end up kat sini akan jadi conjugate base. Betul tak? Ni base ni akan jadi conjugate acid. Okay. Dan ini conjugate base dia masih lagi sebab dia ada lagi hydrogen dia masih lagi boleh jadi acid. Acid tadi apa? Donate proton so sampailah dia jadi conjugate base. Betul tak? So semua ni adalah acid. So macam ni kita nak tahu strength dia. Okay. So strength dia adalah, kata kata kat sini, it decreases with increasing the negative charge. Lagi tinggi you punya negative charge, lagi uh, rendah you punya strength of acid. Ni kan? Ni kosong kan? Ni negative one, ni negative two. Because you can imagine lah, kalau as you compare to PO4, 3 minus terus, tak ada hydrogen. So kat mana dia nak uh, ukur the strength of acid because no more H plus there. Okay. As you compare to HCPO4, you ada tiga. Tiga hydrogen yang attach pada oxygen. So dia boleh uh, hasilkan tiga H plus from HCPO4 as compared to H2PO4 minus and HPO4 to minus. Okay. So clear eh kat sini. <coughs> 
Okay, so tadi polyprotic acid, now is carboxylic acid, okay. Carboxylic acid ni lah COH ya. Eh. So carboxylic acid are relatively weak acid. Dia automatically kita tahu dia adalah weak acid sebenarnya. Dia tak akan jadi strong acid. Okay, it is because the alkyl group, okay later you akan belajar lebih details lah what is the meaning by alkyl. You akan belajar dalam chapter 5 nanti eh. Alkyl groups ni actually the R sebab dia boleh berubah kan. R ni dia boleh jadi CH3, dia boleh jadi CH3, CH2 dash, dia boleh jadi CH3, CH2, CH2 dan seterusnya lah. Tak kisah berapa banyak chain dia ada kan. Itu adalah R. Itu kita panggil alkyl groups eh. It is actually electron donating. Dia donate elektron. Sebab dia ada carbon kan, ada hidrogen kat situ boleh donate elektron. Okay. Where it's actually the positive inductive effect. Okay. Dia akan yang penting dia donate elektron lah. Details ni sebenarnya you akan belajar uh, later dalam chapter 5 lah. Okay. So this will increase the electron density on the oxygen in the CO bond. Okay. COH kat sini dia bila, okay kalau nampak kat sini contoh CH3, ah, dia akan donate elektron. Dia macam share lah. Okay, dia akan bagi elektron tu ke arah CO kat sini. Resulting the OH bond become less polar. Remember, sebelum ni kita dah mention OH uh, akan jadi uh, makin polar because tertarik. Betul tak? Tadi saya mention macam yang ni kan. CL akan tarik, tarik, tarik. So OH bond akan makin uh, <coughs> Makin positif sebab dia dah makin weak lah dia tertarik kan ha, Dia terbalik dengan yang ini Ni pasal CH3 ni dia donate Dia bagi pula Okay dia lebih suka untuk memberi Okay so, sebab dia akan pergi pada central atom C ni Okay lepas tu that's why kalau you imagine Kalau ada lebih daripada uh, satu CH3 Ada CH3, CH2 ada banyak lagi C, C kat sini Lagi banyak lah dia akan donate ke arah CO ni. COOH tu lah. So bila lagi banyak donate, now dia akan jadi terbalik lah. The OH bond will become less polar. So bila less polar, okay, dia macam nak neutralkan the polarity lah. So basically remember, kalau you belajar polarity, CH4 kan, dia actually adalah polar kan, polar molecule sebab dia um, Uh, apa dia pergi ke arah central atom kan so dia polar eh uh, sorry polar pula dia non polar ah uh, so dalam case ni dia sebenarnya polar lah okey sebab dia tak simetri tapi because of CH3 tu dia akan pergi ke arah central atom so that's why kat sini the OH bond akan jadi less polar less polar dia nak try to become non polar lah okey dia still polar but less lah so bila less polar tadi maksudnya Bond tu makin kuat. Bila bond makin kuat, so dia makin susah. Difficult to to get the H plus, to release the H plus. So bila difficult to release H plus, that's why dia adalah weak acid. Okay. So nampak eh, explanation dia actually you nampak macam okay, ni explanation ni. Tapi end up dia punya uh, conclusion dia akan jadi reverse daripada apa yang kita nak. Okay, dia jadi terbalik. Okay. So this makes proton loss more difficult. Okay, dia dah, dia dah weak kan? Dia, eh, weak pula. A bond dia jadi makin kuat. So, of course, dia susah nak keluar. Which consequently reduces the dissociation or partially ionized. Dia susah lah tadi macam saya cakap. Dia susah nak dapat H plus tu. Okay. Uh, okay, so basically macam ni lah contoh eh. Uh, ni yang tak ada CH3 langsung, ni ada CH3, ni ada makin banyak, makin banyak. Okay. Uh, KA ni adalah constant of acid lah. Basically, uh, sebab saya tak explain lagi sebenarnya based on KA, PKA ni. Tapi basically sebenarnya lagi tinggi value of KA, lagi acidic uh, acid tu. So maknanya in this case, yang ni lagi tinggi KA kan. Dia lebih acidic. Uh, yang ni lebih rendah, acidity dia makin berkurang. So that's why dia kata kat sini, decreasing acidity with increasing of uh, electron donating group. Which is CH3 lah, R tu eh. Okay, so tadi habislah untuk acid, uh, explanation for acids. Now we move to base. Okay, base dia sebenarnya tak banyak. Kita pecah dua je. Kita ada strong base and weak base. Okay, strong base basically uh, apa yang daripada group one and group two lah. Dia biasanya related dengan metal kan. <coughs> okay, so kita biasa tahu adalah metal hydroxide. NOH, calcium hydroxide, KOH kan. Okay, itu uh, group one, group two lah. Okay. But we for 
metal oxide also it's actually a strong base okay remember uh, uh yesterday uh, kita ada mention about kalau oxide pun adalah base kan uh, cuma dia tak boleh uh, uh, cannot be explained using arrhenius okay but here uh, the metal oxide is actually kita dah tahu the base then it is it is actually strong base juga okay and then how about weak base so weak base basically selain daripada group 1 group 2 tu and uh, paling penting kita tahu dia sebenarnya dia rich electron rich species remember if you referring to uh, yang electron rich ni mana lewis lewis theory eh Okay, yang electron rich maksudnya dia akan donate electron. So, itu adalah base. And normally it's a weak base. Dan dia contoh paling senang adalah, yang paling selalulah kita pakai adalah ammonia ataupun anything related to amine. Amine actually yang ada NH2 ni lah. So, dia boleh boleh macam-macam. Sama macam tadi kan, you boleh macam carboxyl acid. Dia boleh jadi CH3, CH2, CH2. Tapi tiba-tiba ada amine juga. Ah, So, kita tahu ni mesti weak base. Anything yang ada nitrogen lah kat sini basically eh. Nitrogen H lah amine eh. Kita panggil amine group. Dia pun amine group ni sebenarnya you akan belajar details nanti dalam chapter 5. Okay. <coughs> Let's look at this checkpoint. The strong and weak acids and bases can be simply predicted based on their molecular structures. Classify each of the following compounds as a strong, weak, strong base, weak base. Justify your answer. Okay. A. KOH. Very basic kan. Kita tahu dia base. Strong base or weak base? Strong base. Yes. This is strong base. How about this one? B? Weak acid. Weak acid. Kenapa weak acid? Because this is carboxylic acid kan. All of the carboxylic acid yang ada electron dia orang tengok. You tak payah tengok belakang ni pun. Tengok COH je kita. Kita tahu dah dia weak acid. How about HClO4? What is this? This is perchloric, perchloric, uh, this is a word, perchloric acid lah. This is acid. Is this strong? Or weak? Strong. strong. This is strong acid. Why, uh, how How to get, uh, to know that this is strong acid? You tengok je, okay, this is uh, considered as oxo acid. Okay, acid yang ada oksigen. And then you tengok pula, oxo acid yang oksigen dia sangat banyak. So, kita boleh terus assume that this is a strong acid lah. Okay. How about this one? You tak tahu nama pun tak apa. Yang penting kita tengok ni. Dia ada amine group kat sini. So this is? Weak base. Weak base. Okay. So dia nak justify. Okay based on kita explain tadi lah. Okay kalau tadi strong base kita tahu daripada group one. Dia ada hydroxide. Weak acid ni because the satu dia carboxylic acid. Then you nak explain lebih dia because dia kata kat sini the COH proton is the only ionizable proton. Tak kisahlah kompleks macam mana pun you punya R alkyl groups ni. But yang keluar nanti end up kat sini je. OH tu kan. Okay. HCl4 tadi again saya cakap pasal oxo acid. Okay. Dia ada three lone oxygen atoms. Okay. So dia akan pull electron density. Ni based on yang tadi kita explain lah. Okay. Menyebabkan uh, the OH bond become polar and weak. So that's why easier to donate proton. That's why dia adalah strong acid. While D, the weak base. Okay. Because dia ada lone pair dekat uh, amine. Okay. Uh, ni nama group ni adalah amine. Amine group. Okay. Arrange the following species in increasing order of acid strength. Okay, maybe I can give you one, one minute. Cuba susun sekejap. Then the acid strength means that from weak to strong acid lah. Cuba susun. <coughs>
Okay. Ya. Yeah. Okay. So kalau kita nak tengok kat sini. Kalau A first kita tengok dulu lah. Apa yang ada kat situ kan. Species yang macam mana. So basically dia sama je. Dia adalah uh, oxo acids kan. So this is oxo acids. It just difference in terms of oxygen. How about B? B adalah species yang sama juga. But this is poly. Protic acid. Protic acid. Okay. While C basically dia campur. So maksudnya you nak tu nak nak tengok ni is actually based on dia punya electronegativity lah. Okay. Okay so for A I think uh, semua boleh susun kot kan. So A of course oxo acid we know that uh, higher oxygen dia paling uh, strong lah. Okay followed by HO3, O2 and O. Okay, how about B? Polyprotic, okay. Lagi tak ada hydrogen, of course lah lagi. Uh, susah nak jadi acid kan. Dia tak favour pun jadi acid kat situ. Okay, so kat sini um, because uh, highly negative uh, uh, charge, dia weak acid eh. We consider as weak acid lah. So this is weak. HSO4 and then H2SO4. How about C? Okay, so now... Um, HI and HBr same group, selenium S ni semua lain group kan. So if you look at this, uh, Br, HI is group 17. So basically dia adalah antara yang paling tinggi lah. Okay, duduk paling kanan. Okay, so kat sini HI and Br you boleh compare uh, in terms of uh, dia punya group. Kan uh, dalam group yang sama. Okay, so iodine lebih bawah daripada Br. So tadi apa? Lagi bawah dia lagi apa uh, panjang kan bond dia makin panjang the longer the bond the weaker the bond betul lagi long lagi panjang lagi weak lagi weak lagi strong the acid okay that's why dia paling tinggi okay and then HBr lepas tu barulah uh, kita followed by uh, selenium and also sulfur sebab dia dah different group okay <coughs> so far uh, boleh faham eh uh, tadi before kita masuk yang lebih details kat sini I mean the definition macam mana you nak differentiate uh, str uh, strength of acids and bases eh Basically kalau you tengok base memang tak banyak lah kan uh, acid tu yang banyak banyak uh, Sebab dia banyak species dan dia banyak acid So kalau you tengok lepas ni uh, Acid tu yang ada macam-macam jenis. Kalau base tu dia tak berapa banyak. So you tak perlu nak ingat sangatlah uh, for base. You dah boleh simply ingat. Okay strong base daripada metal group 1, group 2. Okay. Uh, oxide dengan hydroxide. The rest tu yang ada amin-amin tu. Itu mostly adalah weak base. Okay. So kita masuk kepada. Now kita nak pergi specific pula. Pada strong acids and strong bases. Kita nak pecahkan strong acid dengan weak acid with bases. Tadi you you just nak tengok dari segi jenis kan. Now kita pergi specific. Okay. So the strength of an acid or base depends on the degree of dissociation of acid and base in water. What does it mean by degree of dissociation? Dissociation, remember bila saya mention about dissociation ni tadi, dia nak pecah lah. Maksudnya tadi kita tahu HCl, dia nak pecah dari H plus and Cl minus. Dia nak dissociate. HCl dissociate into H plus and Cl minus. Okay. So the degree of dissociation tu sangat penting. Maksudnya adakah dia 100% dissociate uh, to become H plus and Cl minus or only 50% or 70% Ah, uh, itu yang menentukan the strength of acids and base. Okay. Uh, so here kita pergi pada strong dulu lah. Strong acid and base. A strong acid dissociates completely with water. What does it mean? Completely maksudnya 100% lah. Okay. Completely ni 100%. Meaning that 100%. Sebab tu kalau you tengok arrow dia, dia bukan reversible arrow eh. Maksudnya HCl pecah terus jadi H plus and Cl minus. Okay. Ataupun kita macam saya tunjuk lah. Kita selalu guna mesti tambah air kan. Sebab dia completely with water. So HA plus H2O you dapat Instead of H plus, you dapat H2O plus lah. Okay. And A minus ni tadi Cl minus. Okay. 100% kalau you tengok kat sini, this is the acid right. Before dissociation, for example, this is 100%. Bila you after dissociation, okay, after you dah pecahkan dia, HA akan jadi zero. 
Okay and 100% akan disusit menjadi H3 O plus and also A minus. So means that dia tak akan patah balik menjadi HA. 100% eh. This is for strong acids. Strong base also disusit completely. So basically sama jugalah kes eh. NOH dia akan disusit completely dapat NA plus NOH OH minus. So dia takkan patah balik dapat NOH. Dia tak ada baki-baki kat situ lah. Okay. No leftover of NOH. Okay, so this is the examples, uh, some of the common lah eh, common. Sebenarnya ada banyak lagi, okay. So the commons for strong acid and also strong base, okay. HCl, HBr, HR, HNO3, HClO4, okay. Ini contoh-contoh dia lah. <coughs> okay, how about weak acids and weak bases? So weak acids and weak bases dissociate partially. Kita tak cakap dia half, dia partially sebab it depends. Uh, Uh, berapa persen. So means that bila partially tu dia not 100%. Okay. So bila not 100% if you look at this uh, uh, figure before dissociation is 100% right. Okay after dissociation of course dia akan produce HCO plus and also A minus. But you still akan dapat HA tu dalam bilangan yang banyak juga. So maybe this one is um, 80%. So here is 10% and here is 10%. Uh, maybe something like that lah. Okay. So bila kita kata partially, so the reaction of weak acid with water, if you look at this, it will have the reversible arrow. Okay. So that's why you akan, you sebenarnya you akan relate balik dengan what you have learned in chapter 2. Reversible arrow. Ingat lagi? Okay. Reversible arrow maksudnya bila dissociate, dia boleh patah balik. Untuk jadi HA. Sebab tu you tengok kat sini HA kat sini masih banyak. So maknanya dia jadi HO plus dengan A minus tapi dia boleh produce balik HA. And that dia sebenarnya suka juga untuk produce kembali jadi HA. So basically this one the reaction of weak acid with water as you can see here this is also uh, referring to bronsted lowry theory. Kalau ingat balik this is acid right plus water kan dia react with water kan. This is uh, acid Water here, now it become base. Betul tak jadi base sebab HA end up jadi A minus. A minus maksudnya ini adalah conjugate base H3O plus dia terima daripada HA tadi. So this is the conjugate acid. Okay, maksud lori ya. Eh? And reaction of weak base with water sama juga. Weak base pun dia dissociate partially. So bila partially, so base kita tahu dia adalah base lah. So now water is be, will become acid. So dia terima kan base except proton. So dia akan jadi BH plus. So this is conjugate acid. OH minus this is conjugate base. And for this when you have conjugate okay and dissociate partially your equation must be reversible arrow. Okay. Kenapa saya highlight sangat benda ni? Because of students sometimes maybe sebab banyak sangat equation. Because for strong acid, your equation is only one arrow, single arrow. Okay, only one direction saja. Okay, direction to the product. Okay, however for weak uh, acid or weak base, you must use reversible arrow. But equation, kalau you salah, tak ada markah. Maksudnya salah lah. Even, okay, equation you betul tapi you buat single arrow, salah. Okay, that's why uh, saya nak uh, tekankan kat sini lah. Okay. So, because of it is a reversible process, okay, remember you belajar chapter 2, reversible process, maksudnya you akan boleh calculate value of KC and KP, right, for chapter 2. So, sama juga kat sini, we apply the same uh, concept, okay. You can calculate actually value of KA and KB. Uh, now, kita pergi pada acid dulu lah. So, acid is KA lah. Okay, acid dissociation constant. Kalau you ingat lagi what, uh, how to calculate the KC and KP, it is actually product of a rectangle, right? Okay, so same goes to this one. The, for example, this is your equation. HA, any acids lah eh, plus water. So any acid, this is base, this is conjugate acid, this is conjugate base, okay. The acid dissociation constant KA is equals to concentration of product over concentration of reactant. 
Okay. So, now it is actually A minus, okay, mesti square bracket eh, HAO plus over HA sahaja. Why we do not take this one? This is the pure, pure liquid. Sebab tu kita tak ambil. Macam nampak? Dia macam ni saja. It's related to chapter 2, right? Okay. So, what is actually KA? So, the KA is actually you nak measure the strength of acid. Okay, the strength of acid depends on the degree of dissociation of acid. Uh, kalau you ingat lagi tadi ya, eh, KA ke mana? Asyiklah jauh. Okay, this one. Uh, remember? Nah, tadi saya tak, ada, saya tak ada explain lagi pasal KA, PKA kan? Actually, KA ni kita nak tengok strength of acid. Okay, so lah kat sini, uh, kalau in this case lah, lagi um, apa value ni, lagi besar value, so uh, 10 kosong dan kita empat lagi besar lah kan. So the uh, strength of acid tu makin kuat. Okay so KA ni untuk determine the strength of acid. So value setiap uh, KA tu akan berbeza lah untuk setiap acid kan. Okay. So here the KA is only applicable for measuring the strength of weak acid. Kita tak boleh nak measure strength of strong acid. Okay strong acid you nak compare tadi kan. Tapi you tak boleh measure guna KA. Why? Because strong acid dissociate completely. Dia tak ada reversible arrow. So you cannot use this formula because reversible arrow is product of return. Kan? Kita akan guna formula tu. Kalau strong acid, kalau you nak measure strength, you akan measure macam cara tadilah. You tengok electron negativity ke, you tengok bilangan oksigen ke, itu you, you ikut method yang tu. Kalau weak acid, you akan guna method ni according to the value of Ka. So it means here the larger the Ka, the stronger the acid. Lagi tinggi bila kira, lagi tinggi Ka, lagi kuatlah acid tu. Okay sebab kenapa kita guna calculation ni juga uh, weak acid sangat-sangat banyak. A lot. Okay sebab even conjugate acid is also weak acid. Kan? It's also acid. So you boleh calculate daripada situlah. The, kita tengok je value of Ka dia. Kalau lagi, lagi tinggi daripada yang kita kira yang lain nak compare, ada lagi kuatlah asid dia. Okay. So that's why kat sini uh, for strong acid kita tak pakai because the Ka for strong acid is extremely large. Sebab dia tak reversible kan. Maksudnya dia akan ambil value of product saja. Okay. So same goes to base, okay, base dissociation constant Kb, basically untuk base lah, okay, sama juga. The strength of base depends on the degree of dissociation, okay. So Kb sama jugalah for strong base is extremely large. So that's why dia tak ada untuk strong base. Kb is only applicable for measuring the strength of weak base. So sama juga method dia kita guna concentration of product over reactant and water kita tak ambil lah because it's a pure liquid. Okay. So you are the acids, you are the base. So of course this acids and base they related to water tau. Okay. You belajar before this. Okay. Pure water pH dia berapa? Tujuh kan? Kita assume lah pure water at 25 degrees Celsius pH dia 7. So we can get this also the value of Kw. Ha, dia specific sebab dia water kan. So kita tak adalah letak dia SKA and Kb. We put it as Kw. K uh, concern to water. Okay. So because here we know that water is amphoteric. Okay. It can behave either as an acid or base. Dia boleh jadi dua-dua kan. So daripada situ macam mana kita nak tahu value dia kan. Tentang tak? So here, water dia boleh ionize juga but it's a weakly ionized to give H plus and OH ion. Okay, for example, let's say you 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 react water and water but different acidity. Maksudnya kat sini water base and water acid. Okay, remember using bronsted lowry equation. So this base akan produce conjugate acid sebab dia akan terima H plus. Terima daripada siapa? Daripada acid water ni. So water ni dia akan bagi dekat water sebelah kiri. So now this water akan jadi OH minus. So dia akan jadi conjugate base. Ha, ni maksud dia water, this water, okay sesama water dia akan ionize juga to produce HCO plus and also OH minus. Okay. So this we call it uh, as a KW. You boleh calculate lah. Maksudnya remember sama je method macam KAKB. You akan kira 
product of rectum kan? Now, your product is OH minus and H3O plus. Okay, this one. Over rectum. Now, but rectum you is do do pure liquid. So, you tak ambil ni, you tak ambil ni lah. That's why you KW is equals to H3O plus multiply with OH minus. Okay. And because uh, they constant kan. So, at 25 degree Celsius, basically, the value of KW is constant lah. Which is 1 times to the power of 10, uh, 10 to the power of negative 14. Okay, this is the value. Kena ingat ke? Ah, ni kena ingat lah. You macam always memorize. Sebab end up nanti kita akan uh, automatically ingat sebab kita akan selalu pakai this value. Okay. So as the temperature increases, the value of KW increases. Again, you belajar in chapter 2 kan, temperature will give effect to the K value, right? So at 25 value dia 1 kali 10 kosong negatif 14, room temperature kan? Tapi kalau you increase the temperature, of course the value of KW pun akan increase. Yang tu tak perlu lah ingat. Kita biasa akan pakai at 25. Okay, yang itu normally dia akan bagilah. Okay. So basically, sebenarnya saya nak explain lah why is the value is this one. Okay, okay, sorry. Value dia memang ni. This is a constant, right? Okay, kita boleh manipulate lah from this actually. Okay, where this ion product constant KW ni, okay, kita tahu dia dia untuk dia dapat uh, value KW tu uh, or dia nak dissociate to get HCO plus and OH minus. Basically dia, kita panggil dia auto ionization. Remember, ionize kan? HCl ionize to produce H plus and Cl minus. Water pun sama dia ionize but we call it auto ionization. Dia akan automatically ionize. Sendiri, secara sendiri eh. So, since we know that the KW, Allah, kita tahu the KW, uh, tadi equation dia macam ni kan. Okay. Okay. This is the KW, HCO plus uh, multiply with OH minus, this is the value kan, at 25 lah. Okay, kalau temperature lain, value dia lain. And we know that in pure water, of course the concentration of HCO plus is equal to OH minus. Pure water eh. Sebab you kata pH dia 7 kan, neutral. Bila you kata neutral, maksudnya dia takkan ada terlebih acid ataupun terlebih base. Value dia akan sama. Okay, so bila value dia sama, basically, HCO plus concentration pun akan sama kan? Bila sama, because we know that the value of KW is 1 times to the 10 to the power of negative 14. So you boleh square root kan dia saja. Then you akan dapat value of respective HCO plus and OH minus which is 1 times one times 10 to the power of negative 7. seven. Okay, 1 kali 10 kosong negative 7 concentration dia. Pure water eh. Okay, sebab dia neutral kan? So that's why value dia sama. So pure water is neutral because it contains equal eh. Tadi saya mention lah, equal concentration. So if there is an addition of acids or base in the water, so imagine uh, water tu dah neutral. So dia patutnya value dia 1 kali 10 kosong negatif 14. Tapi you add HCO plus kat situ, uh, means that of course lah HCO plus tu akan lebih sikit kan? So as that you akan dapat acidic Equation. Equation pula. Like acidic solution. Okay. And if you add more uh, OH, dia akan jadi basic solution. Ikut logik lah kan. Betul tak? I initially, concentration dia sama. Tiba you add more uh, H2O plus. So of course, dia akan jadi lebih acidic. Or you add more OH minus, dia akan jadi more basic. Okay. And there is an inverse relationship between H2O plus and OH minus in echo solution. Inverse relationship means here as the concentration of one increase, the other must decrease in order to keep KW constant. Okay. In this case, contohlah, kita nak maintainkan KW tu, okay, means that kalau you add more H2O plus uh, concentration, the concentration of uh, OH minus akan, uh, apa, you must, uh, you kena decrease kan dia lah. Okay, end up, end up you kena make it tally. Macam you belajar the Chartier's principle lah basically eh. You nak jadikan balik dia at equilibrium. Kalau you nak maintain the KW as uh, 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14. Okay, itu maksud inverse relationship eh. <coughs> so, 
basically actually the kw is related to ka and kb okay so how we 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 know that okay based on the relationship between ka and kb okay so kita tahu kalau ka basically any acids lah acids plus uh, water uh, water here is base you akan dapat conjugate acid and also conjugate base kan so this is ka betul tak ka is the product of reactant eh and then you ada juga base so this is base a minus h2o it, now it become acid so this is conjugate acid and this is conjugate base okay if you combine remember manipulating the equation you belajar chapter 2 Okay, manipulating, you total up kan equation, you boleh cancel HA dengan HA, okay, you cancel here, you can also cancel the A minus and A minus, yang tinggal now is water and water, so water and water and then product dia adalah HO plus and also OH minus. Okay, now can you see, this is the equation for pure water, betul tak? Water plus water dapat HO plus plus OH minus, which is KW. Where the KW is HCO plus multiply with OH minus kan. So to get this KW basically you can get also from KA times KB. Remember? Ah, ni yang you belajar dalam manipulating tu kan. Kalau you buat hasil tambah equation tu the value of K constant tu adalah hasil tarap kan. So here ni tadi A minus okay this is the expression for KA. This is the expression for KB kan. And that we boleh cancel this one. HA pun boleh cancel. So yang tinggal HCO plus OH minus which is also equals to KA kali KB. So it means that now KA kita tahu KA kali KB is equals to KW. Ini relationship dia lah. Okay. <coughs> So, this relationship hold for any acid-base conjugate pair regardless of the strength of acids or base. So, KA, KB ni, uh, you tak boleh lah simply, okay, saya nak ambil KA untuk uh, acetic acid. KB ni, saya nak ambil KB untuk uh, amin. So, saya darabkan saya dapat KW. No, it cannot be like that. Dia mesti conjugate, mesti ada pair lah. Remember, pair tu sebab you nak cancel kan? Sekejap eh, saya nak tunjuk. Sebab nanti anda you boleh cancel ni, you boleh cancel ni, you boleh cancel ni. Okay. Kalau tiba-tiba KA awak ni awak kata tadi acetic acid KB ni uh, ammonia lah kata kan. Mana boleh mana boleh cancel kan? Ah, you tak akan dapat uh, equation ni. So maksud KA kali KB equals to KW is actually related to its uh, conjugate. Maksudnya contoh acid you tadi uh, metanoic acid Saya ambil yang sedang eh. Contoh asid you adalah HF. So this conjugate base, you tak boleh letak uh, uh, ammonia. Dia adalah F minus. Itu maksud dia. So contoh kalau base saya ammonia, asid you tak boleh ambil tiba-tiba asidik asid ke apa? Dia mesti jadi NH4 plus. So mana nak dapat benda ni, conjugate ni? Ha, ni based on Bronsted-Lowry punya theory. Okay. So clear eh? I hope you clear this one eh. Maksudnya to get this uh, calculation eh, KA times KB equals to KW basically is related to the conjugate pair. Okay, dia mesti dengan pair dia. So because of what? Yang tadilah saya cakap because of kita nak cancel out. Cancel out this one and this one. Ini dengan ini barulah you boleh dapat H3O plus darab OH minus. Okay. Eh so far okay ke? Clear eh? Ada apa-apa nak tanya? Okay. Okay so tadi you dah belajar KA and KB kan? So kalau you perasan value dia sangat-sangat kecil. Value dia mesti ada 10 kuasa negative something. Negative 14 KW kan? Ha, kalau KA pun sebenarnya 10 kuasa negative something, negative something kan? So value tu uh, sangat kecil lah basically eh. Okay so actually you also can simplify that value of KA by using PKA or simplify KB by using PKB. So what is actually PKA, PKB ni? Okay. PKA is negative log KA. PKB is negative log KB. So basically P is negative log. Okay. Bila you negative logkan value of KA, you akan dapat nombor bulat. 
nombor yang sat, satu dua nombor je lah okay dia takkanlah dapat sepuluh kuasa negatif empat belas tu tak ada lah okay one one times ten to the power of negative fourteen ni tadi kw kan okay kalau you p kan dia dia akan jadi p kw okay dia akan dapat equal to fourteen ah tu maksud dia Uh, dia akan simplify kan. But okay here dia punya uh, relationship dia akan jadi terbalik eh. We know that the larger the KA the stronger the acid. Tadi kan lagi besar value of KA maksudnya you nak compare negatif 4 dengan negatif 14 of course ni lagi besar. Kan the stronger the KA. However bila you dah kira dalam bentuk PKA the smaller the PKA the stronger the acid. Apa eh terbalik eh. The smaller PKA, the stronger the acid. Sebab dia negative log kan? Okay. So same goes to weak base lah. The larger the KB, the stronger the base. The smaller the PKB, the stronger the base. Okay. You kena ingat this part. Okay. So ni beberapa contoh value of KA and PKA. Contohlah kat sini. Okay, ni saya jadikan homework lah untuk you eh. You boleh fill in this value of Ka. Contoh eh, chloroacetic acid, this is the value of Pka, 2.85. What is the value for Ka? So we know that Pka is negative log Ka. So you are the value of Pka kan, 2.85. Ah, Cuba kira sekejap. Saya tak ada calculator pula kat saya sekarang. Berapa? So sini negative log Ka. So Ka sama dengan negative log is exponent negative 2.85. Berapa? Ada nak kira? 7.9. Berapa berapa? 7. Berapa tadi jawapan dia? 7.1. 10 times negative 2. Negative 2 eh. Hmm. Okay. How about let's say ni uh, formic acid. What is the value for PKA? This is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 4. What is the value for PKA? Mana saya letak saya punya calculator. Cuba kira bagi jawapan kat saya. Guna formula tadi ya, negative log. Tiga poin tujuh. Tiga poin tujuh. Tujuh empat lima. Tujuh empat lima, tujuh lima lah. Okay, uh, so uh, you boleh kira lah yang lain. Uh. Yang penting uh, tu je. A formula yang penting you tahu formula This is the formula lah PKA is equal to negative log KA So kalau you dapat PKA nak cari KA uh, Calculator tu shift log kan But dia ada negative kat situ eh Kalau student pun dia dia terlepas pandang uh, This negative Okay please take note lah on that part eh Okay yang ni the rest tu you boleh try Kira sendirilah eh Okay ni cara dia lah Okay <coughs> ha, Ni dia kata acid strength Ah betul lah betul ke? Tadi kan kita kira kan? Ah, so ni paling tinggi. So uh, lagi lagi tinggi KA, lagi kuat uh, acid strength. Ah betul lah kan? Ni negatif 2, yang lain negatif 4, negatif 5, negatif 10. So lagi tinggi KA, you perasan lagi rendah PKA. Kalau you compare lah dengan ni 7.52 kan? Ah, so dia, dia terbalik eh. Dia inversely proportional KA and PKA tu. Okay. Okay. So same goes to uh, uh, base lah eh. You can write this uh, on your own. Okay, you try kira. So sama juga kes dia uh, according to the base uh, strength. Okay, lagi rendah PKB. Of course kat sini KB akan jadi lagi tinggi lah. Okay, you can calculate this by your own. Okay, so strength of acid akan lagi tinggi. So you nampak tak kat sini? Nama-nama kan? Nama-nama macam pelik je kan? Base. Uh, this is all weak base kan? Amin. Yang penting dia ada amin. Amin. Ammonia ni from amin lah. You tengok ada NH kan? Hydrazine nama tak ada amin. Tapi kalau tengok ada N ada H. Morphine 
pun tak ada nama amin kat situ tapi ada ada n ada h hydroxyl amin ada n lah okey pyridine ada n juga kat sini aniline ada n h kat sini so um, macam saya pun saya saya pun tak adalah a uh, hafal semua weak base kita tahu yang common je lah macam ammonia kita tahu common kan Ke, uh, tapi cara nak menengok dia you tengoklah kalau dia ada nh tu basically dia adalah weak base lah and then dia bagi value of kb But normally macam NaOH kan, this is strong base kan Value of K, Kb tu biasanya dia takkan bagi sebab value dia sangat-sangat besar Okay But student selalu tanya saya, Miss macam mana saya nak determine Whether dia weak acid ke, dia uh, strong acid ataupun weak base ke, uh, strong base uh, Biasanya saya cakap based on macam ni je lah kita tengok Satu lagi dia keyword dia dia akan bagi value of Kb Kalau dia tak bagi tu, itu biasanya Unless dia minta you cari kan. Sebab value of Ka, Kb adalah constant. Okay. Uh, kita tak sampai lagi kat sini time bila yang masa you nak determine strong acid ke strong base pada calculation. Sebab itu nanti kita akan masuk uh, another subtopic. Okay. So tadi kita belajar relationship between Ka and Kb kan. So now we also can have relationship between Pka and Pkb. Okay since we know that the value of Ka and Kb kalau you darabkan you is equal to Kw kan. Okay, so kalau you negatif logkan semua, you negatif logkan semua You akan dapat, you susun balik, you akan dapat macam ni, betul tak? Darab akan jadi tambah kan? Negatif log Ka plus negatif log Kb equals to negatif log Kw All the negative log is equals to P kan? Negatif log is equals to P, so Pka plus Pkb equals to Pkw Okay, Kw tadi 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14 So negatif log Kw is 14 So Pka plus Pkb is equals to 14. Okay. So ada dua benda you boleh ingat. Okay. Satu tadi Ka times Kb equals to Kw which is equals to 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14. Or you can also memorize or remember on this part lah. Pka plus dia plus eh kat sini. Pkb is equals to 14. Okay. Saya lagi suka yang ini pasal nombor dia tak melibatkan nombor besar you boleh congak lah kat situ but then again later you have to calculate the value of P lah sebenarnya kan Okay So this is the relationship lah So um, Okay The strength of acid base members of conjugate pair Remember bila saya mention about uh, Ka, Kb tu dia mesti dengan conjugate dia eh dia tak boleh macam saya cakap uh, you kata Ka untuk uh, Um, acetic acid, dia tiba dia kata KB untuk ammonia. Ah, tak boleh lah. Dia, itu, dia tak ada relationship kat situ kan. Okay. So here the relationship with its conjugate pair. Okay. There is an inverse relationship between strength of acid and base members. For example macam ni. We know that HCl4 is a strong acid. So dia punya conjugate base dia apa? CL4 minus. Eh. CL4 minus adalah conjugate base kan. So bila dia strong ni akan jadi weak conjugate base. Part, maksudnya partner dia tu akan weak. Kalau acid you strong, conjugate base dia mesti weak. Ataupun kalau uh, acid you weak, conjugate base dia adalah strong. Ha, tu maksud dia. Eh. Contoh kat sini, ammonia. Okay. Ammonia here, this is um, um, weak base. Okay, weak base. Tapi you compare dengan ClO4, dia lebih kuat lah. Ha, ni maksudnya kita compare sesama weak base. Okay. Dia paling kuat. But here bila dia punya conjugate acid dia paling lemah antara semua. Ha, macam tu. Yang penting kalau you ingat sebenarnya inverse relationship tadi the stronger the acid or base the weaker is conjugate. Ha, you ingat macam tu je. Okay. Kalau HCl tu tinggi maksudnya Cl- tu conjugate base dia weak. Okay. Macam HF Uh, dia masuk kategori weak acid So HF here the F minus categorized as um, Strong uh, Weak base Strong conjugate base Macam tu lah eh Okay cuba jawab sekejap ni Apa ni Nitro ion
Oh, dia nak equilibrium constant for this acid. Saya terlupa nak pada empat ni. <laughs> ni jawapan sebenarnya. So, of course lah. Uh, equilibrium constant expression for acid KA kan. Okay, cuba jawab dulu A dengan B. Okay, I think uh, you do not have any problem for A, right? Okay, right, the equilibrium constant expression. Okay, dia bagi dalam tu ayat kan. Rata ion NO2 minus is in nitrous acid. HNO2 produce a light blue solution in the cold condition. For the equilibrium that exists in a liquid solution of nitrous acid, write the equilibrium constant expression. So, you nak buat soalan macam ni, you sebenarnya kena tahu dulu um, equation dia kan? So in this case, because of the nak value of Ka, okay, so ni sebenarnya adalah information, okay. Yang penting dia nak uh, acid kan. So what is acid? This is the acid, right. So means that you have to start with acid dulu, HNO2 plus H2O, okay, reversible arrow. Now we know that this is acid, this is base. So what is the conjugate? Base for HNO2. Kan? Dia donate proton dekat H2O kan. So dia akan jadi NO2 minus. So sebenarnya ion ini adalah conjugate base kepada asid ni. Okay. Plus uh, H2O plus. Okay. After that barulah kita boleh tulis dia punya Ka right. Okay. So the Ka. So ni sebenarnya aqueous lah kan. This is liquid. This is aqueous. So the value of Ka is H plus H plus or HCO plus lah. Basically saya, I'm preferring this HCO plus eh. Okay, so this is HCO plus lah eh. Darab dengan NO2 minus here over HNO2. Okay, so this is, I think uh, you do not have any problem for A, right? Okay, how about B? <coughs> Using the following Ka value, indicate the correct and order of base strength. Nampak tak? Dia tak nak Acid tau, dia nak base. Means that dia nak conjugate base kepada all the acids here. So sebenarnya dia tak boleh simply based on value of Ka. You have to get the value of Kb. Walaupun dia bagi Ka. Sebab dia punya sign dia akan jadi terbalik lah basically. Kalau you um, apa dah biasa you boleh just straightforward je. Dia sebab dia inversely kan. Dia inverse relationship. So kalau Ka tinggi, Kb dia rendah. Betul tak? Or you boleh actually sebenarnya keluarkan kalau yang ada yang macam macam saya cakap lah kalau dia slow learner dia nak faham betul-betul actually you kena keluarkan dulu. What is the conjugate base for HNO2? So this is NO2 minus. What is the conjugate base for HF? F minus. Conjugate base for HCN? CN minus. So what is the value pula for KB? KB berapa? So kita tahu daripada sini actually tadi Ka darab dengan Kb is equals to Kw kan? K 
Okay, W tadi 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14. You can get the value of KB. But because of dia nak value of KA using this value saja, okay. So, ah, tengok. Saya boleh, saya boleh bahasa jawapan dia. Okay, so now, you present tak kat sini? Dia punya indication dia pun adalah based on conjugate base, not based on acid. Okay, so although we know that kalau value of Ka tu tinggi, kita tahu okay, so ini maksudnya paling rendah base dia. So the this base, dah mana pula saya nak conteng eh. Sekejap eh. Pakai pen lain lah. Okay. So ni Ka yang paling tinggi kan. This is the second Ka, this is the third Ka. So means that dia akan jadi terbalik, tu tak? Okay. So here, the CN here. Eh, sorry. Ni empat, ni tujuh eh. Si nombor dua. Si nombor satu eh. Okay. So Ka kat sini. Ka paling tinggi maksudnya KB dia paling rendah. Tu tak? So dia kata in order of base strength maksudnya daripada weak base kepada strong base lah. Strength dia eh. Daripada weak kepada strong. So that's why your CN adalah yang paling strong. Sebab ni Ka paling rendah. The second one is HNO2 which is NO2 minus. The third one is F minus. Okay kenapa ada benda ni? Tu saya pelik. Ni tak perlu eh. Okay I repeat lah eh. Okay using the following Ka values indicate the correct order of base strength. Okay dia nak base. Tapi based on Ka kita tahu K, kalau Ka tinggi means that Kb rendah. So kita tahu strength based on Ka and Kb kan. So now the Ka yang paling tinggi is number one here 7.2 kan. Sebab dia sama. So this is number two. This is number three. So according to Kb okay so Kb now it will become number one. It will become number two. It will become number three. Okay. Tapi because of you nak order base strength, you cannot use this one. You must use the conjugate base. Sebab tu you keluarkan balik, conjugate base adalah NO2 minus, this is F minus, this is CN minus. So barulah kita buat dia punya order dia eh. This is CN minus eh. So kita tahu tadi ni nombor satu kan. So that's why CN minus keluar dulu. Lepas tu nombor dua tadi adalah NO2 minus. So this is NO2 minus. Number three adalah this one. Three F minus. Okay dia tadi tak tahulah. Saya rasa ni mungkin soalan yang lama. Punya dia lupa nak padam kot. Okay. So inilah susunan dia. Okay. So kalau soalan tajam macam ni maksudnya you kena keluarkan dulu dia punya conjugate. Conjugate base dia. Okay. Kalau nak tengok dari segi strength, boleh je you tengok dari segi Ka sebab dia jadi terbalik kan? Inverse relationship. Okay, C. Allah, C jawapan dia. Jawapan dia lupa nak hide. Okay, tak apalah kita check je lah kat sini. So, determine the equilibrium constant based or acid dissociation constant for the following reaction. Okay, dia bagi question macam ni. So, you nak kira ni, kita tak tahu dia Ka or Kb kan? So, you have to determine whether uh, this is Uh, NO2 minus ni dia uh, acid ke base ke Okay so kalau you tengok kat sini NO2 minus you produce HNO2 Means that dia akan accept proton So bila accept proton maksudnya kat sini This is base right Sebab dia accept Accept daripada sini kan So ini akan jadi acid, ni akan jadi conjugate acid Ni akan jadi conjugate base <coughs> So basically here Sebab tak ada H3O plus dengan OH minus kat sini, you boleh just refer to this one, NO2 minus kan. So basically dia adalah base lah. So dia kata based on you nak tengok refer apa, you can refer to this one lah. Okay, this K value of NO2 minus, the value of KB. Okay, so kita tahu tadi formula is KA kali KB equals to KW. So value of KB is equals to KW over KA. So ini constant kan. So how to get this value? KA. Referring to this uh, Ka, so dia adalah NO2 minus. So Ka adalah daripada acid HNO2, right? Kb ni adalah NO2 minus. So HNO2 lah Ka kan? So 
ambil lah value y ni. 4 kali 10 kosong negatif 4. You masukkan, you dapat lah value of KB. Okay, so basically sebenarnya you boleh je buat dekat kat sini KA. You nak dapatkan this one kan. KA is equals to KW over KB. However, you dalam dalam soalan ni, you tak ada value of KB right? So macam mana you nak cari KA sedangkan KA ni yang di given from the question. Okay, so that's why kita dapatkan value of KB lah. Okay, sebenarnya bagi saya soalan ni tak berapa Tak berapa bagus lah. Okay, sebab dia uh, confusing Tapi I hope you faham lah. Yang penting sebenarnya kita just nak uh, Nak tunjuk Whether uh, you faham ke tak, dia ada relationship kat situ. Okay, relationship between KA and KB Relationship between base and conjugate acid Ataupun acid dengan conjugate base. Macam tu je lah kira dia Okay, ada soalan tak so far for checkpoint 4? I hope, uh, I hope this is clear eh. So tadi ini jawapan dia yang ni eh. Yang ni saja. Okay. Uh, yang ni pun tadi saya H2O plus eh. Okay. Cuba buat ni. Checkpoint 5. The dissociation of, of water. Okay, dia dah bagi. Predict the value of KW at high temperature. Alah ni sebenarnya bukan chapter 3 ni. Ni awak belajar chapter 2 ni lah. Ah, tak apalah. Cuba. You rasa apa ni? Ini Le Chatelier's Principle. Hmm kita apply balik ni kat sini. You rasa larger or smaller? Ada yang dah jawab? You rasa larger or smaller? Apa tu? <laughs> tu nak tu nak jawab ke nak nyanyi? Sorry sorry. Laju atau semula? Ni kan endo kan? Kalau endo effect of temperature kan? You plus heat here right? Increase the temperature. Increase the temperature with shift to the right. Shift to the right will increase this one. So what do you think about KW? It will become Bukan apa? Laja lah betul tak? Ni eh <coughs> Sebab kan bertambah kan you dah, you dah usik equilibrium system kan Dia akan shift to the right So when you increase the product remember Kan uh, Okay you tak nampak lah eh. Kalau KC kan product over return You increase the product KC will increase ha, Sama lah case kat sini KW You punya tu adalah HDO plus dengan OH minus. You shift to the right. So this will increase, this will increase. What about KW? Will increase tu lah. Tahu tak? KW akan increase. Okay. Sebab dia tadi endo kan. Maybe you ada yang kalau yang tak ingat lah kot eh. Hopefully janganlah tak ingat eh. Sebab kan baru je belajar beberapa minggu yang lepas. Okay. So KW will be larger. Ha, dia bukan nak value pun sebab value ni constant so kita tak tahu kan Just, just mention lah KW will be larger lah Okay how about this one? Eh how about this one? Tiba-tiba jawapan keluar hmm, Tak apalah kita check, kita discuss lah eh A research chemist adds a measured amount of his CL gas to pure water At 25 and obtain a solution with HO plus Calculate OH minus, is the solution neutral, acidic or basic? Okay so kalau dapat soalan macam ni kita keluarkan dulu, okay Dia kata kat sini ni HCL Lepas tu um, Dia bagi value of HCO plus Now dia nak OH minus Okay You kena ingat, keluarkan balik lah Apa relationship between HCO plus dengan OH minus So the relationship is um, Concentration HCO plus Darab dengan OH minus Is equals to Concentration of water Kan Okay, it's a kursus sebenarnya concentration of water which is equals to KW. Okay, so KW is equals to 1 kali 10 kuasa negatif 14. So first you kena tahu uh, dia punya relationship lah. So that's why they, they come up with this uh, equation. So HCO plus kita tahu kan 
uh, 3 kali 10 kosong lagi 4. Now you can get the value of OH minus. Okay, so bahagikan lah. So bila bahagi, I'm <coughs> doing. Oh, okay. New formula. Okay. So, you bagi. Okay. You dapat 3.3 .3, uh, darab 10 kosin negatif 11. So, now dia tanya is the solution neutral, acidic or basic. Kalau neutral maksudnya value tu kena sama. Where dia mesti 1 kali 10 kosin negatif 7 for both. Now, kat sini saja dah 3 kali 10 kosin negatif 4. So, of course kat sini akan jadi lagi kecil value dia. Sebab value kat sini besar kan? So value kat sini akan jadi kecil lah. Dia, dia yang saya cakap tadi awal-awal tadi, dia kena balance kan sebab end up dia akan maintain to get the value of KW. 1 kali 10 kosong negatif 14. So here, the concentration of HDO plus is higher than OH minus. So that's the solution is acidic. Uh, so kat situ lah kita nak mention, nak tahu dia acidic ke basic, actually based on concentration siapa yang lebih. Okay. Kalau dia lebih HO plus, of course dia acidic lah. Kalau dia lebih OH minus, dia akan jadi basic. Okay. Buat awal pula habis ya. Eh. Sebab saya saya tak expect untuk continue with this 3.3. So I think... Um, sekejap eh. Okay. I think because of the other some relationship lah. Saya masuk sikit je uh, for this 3.3 for pH and pOH eh. Okay. So tadi mak maksudnya tadi 3.2 first before I go to 3.3 do you have any questions for KA, KB, KW? The relationship. Lepas tu PKA, PKB, PKW. Basically pusing-pusing dia macam lebih kurang je lah sebenarnya kan. And I would say dia uh, related juga dengan what you have learned in uh, chemical equilibrium. Sebab basically kalau you perasan calculation for KA, KB, uh, PKA, PKB are related to weak acid and weak base. Dia tak tak ada kena mengenai dengan strong acid, strong base. Sebab tadi apa? Value dia, value strong acid, strong base dia sangat besar. And satu lagi because of dia completely dissociate for strong acid and strong base. Tapi kalau for weak acid, weak base, dia partially kan? Partially that's why dia ada reversible arrow. So bila ada reversible arrow tu yang dia ada, value tu akan jadi uh, product over return. Kan? Sebab tu dia ada, because of ada reversible arrow tu lah. Okay, so basically apa yang you kira ni, KAKB ke KW uh, related PKA, PKB tu more on weak uh, acid and weak base. Okay, so far tak ada soalan eh? For this, kalau tak ada saya masuk sikit saja for this 3.3 because they're still uh, a little bit related uh, with uh, tadi. Relate, not uh, uh, not really related tak jugalah. Maksudnya cara kira dia. Okay. Uh, here uh, now kita nak check pula the acidity and basicity measurement. Maksudnya, maksudnya for this 3.3 Tadi okay, you dah tahu dah macam nak kira concentration semua, value of KA, KB and here kita nak kira pula berapa value of pH. So kita belajar acid base, kita akan tahu pH kan. Kita nak tahu berapa pH dia. So we know that the lower the pH, the uh, acidic uh, the concentration kan. So kita nak write this one lah. At the end of this subtopic, you should be able to write the pH or POH, okay, selama ni kita belajar pH je kan. It's actually to measure the concentration of H plus. POH is actually to measure the concentration of OH minus. Okay, now you akan belajar dua-dua lah. pH, POH expression and express the relationship between pH and POH. And then calculate the pH or POH of a strong acid and strong base for a given concentration. Okay, any strong acid. And you also can calculate the pH of a weak acid and also weak base. Okay, after that, uh, calculate the percent ionization or degree of dissociation of acid or base. Given is Ka or Kb. Okay, later you can write details lah. Okay, so what is the concept of pH? Okay, pH tu, remember... Tadi kan saya ada mention about KA, KB, KW Then we have PKA, PKB, PKW P, what is the, does the meaning by P? P is negative log So sama juga sebenarnya dengan PH P is negative log of H concentration of HDO plus Okay, 
So to get the pH is actually calculation dia adalah negative log H plus or H3O plus. Okay. It is defined as a negative of the base 10 logarithm. Ini lah formula ni kan. Of the molar of H3O plus. Okay. So note that the number of places after the decimal point in the pH equals to the number of significant figures reported in the H3O plus concentration. Okay. Ni, ni just uh, not, you can note it for the decimal point of the pH lah. Okay. So selama ni kita duduk dengan pH je kan. Memang kita uh, jarang pakai POH. Kita selalu mention about pH je. But actually POH pun you boleh kira lah. So the concept of POH is actually formula dia negative log OH minus. Uh, as simple as that lah. So kita, you belajar tadi pure water okay uh, value dia adalah 1 kali 10 kuasa negative 14 kan. The KW kan. Okay. So to uh, uh, we know that in pure water, the value of H3O plus is equals to the value of OH minus, okay? Where it is actually 1 kali 10 kuasa negatif 14 square root, kan? That's why you akan dapat 1 kali 10 kuasa negatif 7. So you, if you negative log the concentration, you akan dapat 7. Itulah maksudnya kenapa uh, the pH for pure water is equals to 7, okay? Uh, nanti ada yang macam oh barulah tahu kenapa tujuh ha, Sebenarnya inilah because of this calculation Okay so in this case because of pure water POH also is also uh, equal to seven Okay according to what we have uh, What you have learned previously from the KW Okay so and kita tahu tadi PKA plus PKB is equal to 14 right 14 so the pH plus pOH also equals to 14. Ya, yeah, 7 tambah 7 kan? 14. pKa tambah eh pKa. pH tambah pOH is also equals to 14. Where maksudnya kita tahu uh, concentration sebab sama jelah kes dia. Concentration of H3O plus kali dengan concentration of OH minus is equals to 1 kali 10 kuasa negatif. 14. Eh. Hey. Nampak sangat nak cakap tulisan saya buruk sebenarnya. Kalau tulis balik. H3O plus OH minus is equal to 1 kali 10 kuasa negatif 14. So kalau you buat pH plus kalau you negatif log kan semua juga kan. Sama lah kes dia PKA, PKB kan. POH is equal to 14. Okay. Ha, ni sebab, sebab tu saya macam fikir apa baik saya tunjuk je kat sini sebab dia sebenarnya konsep dia dengan PKA, PKB tu sama tapi uh, KA adalah value of KA lah. Kalau PH adalah value of concentration of H3O plus. Kalau OH adalah OH minus. Okay. So apa yang you belajar tadi kita tahu acidic less than 7 kan. So that's why concentration of H3O plus is higher than OH minus while neutral 7. So concentration is uh, same while well, basic is more than 7 so the concentration of OH minus is higher than concentration of H2O plus okay uh, so basically ni lah yang selama ni you pakai kan the pH paper okay we know that the neutral is around here okay paling neutral is 7 lah okay so uh, increasing acidity means that concentration of H plus you bertambah increasing uh, basicity OH yang bertambah eh concentration so the conversion is saya buka dulu semua lah eh. okay so from H2O plus okay to get OH minus satu kali sepuluh kosa yang kita buat pula over lah okay based on tadi formula kan ha, yang saya dah tulis tadi H2O plus sebab ini adalah formula dia relationship dia 1 kali 10 kuasa negatif 14. So untuk dapat OH minus you just bahagikan lah. Ataupun nak terbalik pun sama juga. Nak dapat H2O plus pun over saja. 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14 over OH minus. Okay. And then for H2O plus nak dapat pH pula relationship dia pH is equal to negative log H2O plus. Or you boleh terbalikkan sometimes dia bagi pH. Dia nak you cari H2O plus. So sama jugalah kalau tekan calculator 
it is actually a uh, shift lock kan dekat calculator tu kan and make sure the negative ni eh ramai student kadang ter ada miss kat situ so it's tend to the power of negative pH okay so sama juga dengan pOH okay kalau pOH is uh, negative log OH minus so OH minus is equal to 10 to the power of negative pOH and this relationship lah between pH and pOH so kita tahu tadi pH plus pOH is equal to 14 okay so pusing-pusing-pusing lebih kurang macam you calculate juga untuk KA, KB, uh, PKA, PKB. Okay, cuba jawab ni. The concentration of OH- ions in a certain household ammonia cleaning solution is 0 0.0025. Calculate the concentration of H plus ions and its pH value. So, dia nak H plus, dia nak pH. Tapi dia bagi OH- Cuba kira. Dapat tak sama macam jawapan? Okay, I think this one uh, a bit straightforward lah sebenarnya. Dia bagi, dia given uh, OH minus is 0 0.0025. But now dia, nak, dia tanya what is the H plus. H plus is actually HCO plus lah eh. Okay, berapa? Lepas tu dia tanya pula what is the pH. Okay, so you have to use the relationship between OH minus and HCO plus equals to 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14. Untuk apa? Untuk dapatkan HCO plus dulu. Then barulah dapat pH. pH dia punya calculation macam mana? Negative log HCO plus. Okay. So betul tak Allah? Kat atas ni juga dia conteng punya. Okay. So Dapatkan H plus Atau HCO plus tadi eh Okay I, 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 actually, I, I prefer HCO plus lah eh Sebab dia masukkan dalam air kan Okay Bagi kan dapat okay this is the concentration for uh, uh, H plus Lepas tu dia nak pH so pH is negative log H plus lah Okay kalau dia nak POH you boleh simply negative log kan OH minus. Now dia nak pH. So negative log you dapat 11.4. You boleh double check sebenarnya. Kalau you check kat sini um, uh, the concentration of OH minus is very high as compared to this uh, H plus. H plus perlu kuasa negative 12. Very low kan. So you imagine maksudnya kat sini concentration of HCO plus is less than concentration of OH minus. So that's why dia akan related dengan pH. pH you akan mesti lagi tinggi daripada tujuh. Okay dan dia tinggi lah. In this case dia sangat tinggi lah 11.4. Okay you boleh double check kat situ. So okay we know that this is base kan. Sebab dia adalah household ammonia. Kan. Ah uh, So Uh, you belajar, maybe you kena um, Maksudnya apa eh uh, You punya, you kena padam dulu stigma you sebelum ni Where uh, kita biasa student macam selalu imagine Kalau dia base, dia ada OH- di dalam tu Kalau dia acid, dia ada HCO plus di dalam tu No, basically 
acid ke base especially for uh, ni lah kita cerita pasal weak eh weak acid weak base dia ada dua-dua HCO plus dia ada uh, OH minus pun ada it just that siapa lagi banyak so in this case HCO plus lagi sikit OH lagi banyak so that's why the base kalau HCO plus OU lagi tinggi OH you sikit that's why dia uh, acid Okay, so you kena, sekarang you kena buka sikit you punya mind tu eh You can imagine, okay, both uh, concentration ada dalam tu Cuma siapa lagi banyak, siapa lagi sikit Untuk menentukan uh, whether the base or acid Okay, so I hope you faham lah That's why uh, benda ni dia related to weak acid weak base lah Kita nak explain tu because that's why you belajar tadi Kita ada base, kita ada juga dia punya conjugate Acid. So dia related. Dan kita ada acid, dia ada juga conjugate base. Dua-dua tu akan wujud cuma siapa lagi tinggi, siapa lagi rendah. Okay. Kalau dia sama, that's why itu dia akan dapat neutral where pH dia akan equals to 7. Okay. Cuba jawab yang ni pula. Coach share point 6. A common concern with carbonated beverages is the acidity levels and the risk of calcium and magnesium loss from bones due to a change in the body's pH level. Calculate the pH of carbonated beverage in which the H plus ion concentration very straightforward lah. Dia nak pH, dia bagi H plus concentration. So pH is equals to negative log H plus or HCO plus lah eh. Dapat tak tu sama eh. 3.47 Okay. Ayat dia bukan banyak panjang kan. Sebenarnya yang, yang tiga ayat yang apa sat, ayat pertama ni tiga apa tiga line yang pertama ni just nak explain je what is carbonated beverages kan Okay sebenarnya calculation dia kat bawah dia je kan Okay basically dia nak pH Negative log H plus lah Kalau dia nak pH tapi dia bagi OH minus ah, Kena buat macam tadi eh tukar jadi H plus dulu Okay how about this one the pH of rainwater collected in a certain region of the northeastern United States on particular day was 4.82. Okay, calculate the H plus. Given pH, calculate the H plus. Now terbalik. Formula is pH is equal to negative log. H3O plus or H plus. Given is, eh, ini yang dia nak cari. Given here is 4.82. Dapat tak sama? Saya tak saya tak kira so Kalau tak sama bagi tahu lah eh So kita boleh betulkan slide ni nanti <coughs> Okay dapat eh I, I assume sama lah eh You just uh, Saya duk cakap tadi exponent kan Actually 10 kuasa eh saya tak ingat Kalau you tekan calculator, shift lock lah kan. And yang ni macam saya cakap lah, negatif ni eh, ramai sudah terlupa selalunya. Dia 4.82 tapi kat sini negatif eh. 10 kuasa negatif 4.82. Okay. Okay, saya stop sampai sini dulu. So far, any questions? Nak ada soalan nak tanya? So far so good eh, okay eh. Okay. 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 So I think kalau okay saya um, apa saya stop kat sini dululah okay. Uh, quite long jugalah sebenarnya kan sebab 3.2 strength of acid and base. Lepas tu you masuk terus PKA, PKB, PH, POH. So saya sambung tadi sebab satu kita ada masa lagi sebab dia almost related. So at least you masih fresh. Okay. So with that kalau ada apa-apa you boleh, uh, boleh tanya. Okay. Uh, boleh personal message saya. Okay, boleh try juga nanti buat tutorial untuk the next uh, question for acid and base. Okay, and uh, by the way jangan lupa ya for those yang uh, tutorial uh, dengan saya esok uh, boleh uh, 
uh, as usual submit your answer by today eh? okay with that okay i end our session today with uh, tasbih kafara and suratul Aus. Okay. okay thank you everyone have a nice day Thank you, Miss. 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 Thank you, Miss.